Hey, you're about to listen to Believe It or Not. Uh, we're two guys who don't really know what we're talking about, and sometimes we say things we probably shouldn't. That's right. So take everything with a grain of salt. And also, if you do like what you hear, maybe uh, rate us on iTunes or share us uh, with your friends. Yeah, get over there. Like, rate, share, comment. Yeah, and, uh, and get, tell us what you think. I got him, sir. Get him while they're holy. Fresh from God's brain to your mouth. He's got here in this radio station. Smite me! Almighty oh, smite her! The Bible is black and white. I have such doubt. Get out of here, devil! I'm a god, not the god. I don't think. And you will know my name is the Lord! We're on a mission from God. Hey everybody, welcome to Believe It or Not. I'm Damian Depping. <laughs> and I'm Trevor Pullman. How you guys doing today? You can't answer. That's fine. Oh, I was waiting for them to uh, answer. I was like, I, are you going to answer what's, I what's mean, happening here? I was holding it for it. Okay. Yeah. So how was your day? You had a good day going on there? Oh, so far so good. Yeah. Pretty pretty relaxed. Yeah, nice. nice sunny day. Did yeah. a little barbecue. How about you, buddy? Same. Well, I worked. Uh, and then I did a barbecue. Oh, that's good. So, not bad. You know what? That's all we can ask for. So, what are we talking about today, Damien? Uh, so, from what I understand is we're going to be watching a little a little movie today. That's right. We're going to do a movie. We're going to watch a movie and we're going to talk about it. Yes. So, um, what do you know about Faith Healers? Uh, We've kind of talked about them a bit. Yeah. Uh, just from what I've seen from uh, either documentaries or, you know, other things making fun of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, basically, did you ever see the Peter Popoff clip of when uh, James Randi exposed him? Yes, I think okay, I have. So, yeah, he's the one who was using the earbud in his yeah. ear, and then his wife would read, like, prayer cards out, so it sounded like, it seemed like he was, like, given people's address by God and, like, told how he was Even sick though they and all stuff. filled it out beforehand, and she was just radioing it to him. Yeah, exactly. And, like, um, Darren, do you know Darren Brown? I know the name. Okay, he's a like a sleight of hand magician and stuff. Okay, he calls himself a mentalist. That that's I'm not sure about that. But um, his sleight of hand stuff, he's really good in. He does like social experiments and stuff. But he did a documentary where he made somebody into a faith healer. So he taught them oh, all the okay. tricks and stuff. So that's that's an interesting one as well. But yeah, so there's a lot of different tricks they they use. Like mm-hmm. yep. um, there's this one where they they convince people that if they have back pains, it's because one of their legs is longer than the other. And then they do this thing where they kind of move it so their hip is a little like off, Changes and the then hip they alignment so yeah, and then they like make it look same. like they're making the, the yeah, foot yeah. grow and stuff. Yeah, and then uh, or they just pull, literally just pull out the shoe a little bit That's off their funny. ankle. Yeah, um, yeah. So they do different things like that. Like if somebody's walking in with a cane, mm-hmm. they'll offer them a wheelchair so it's easier to get around, and then they make it look like they were healed and got it like walked out of the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> so so is that is that what we're watching today? Yeah, so today we're watching a movie called Marjo. Marjo. Yeah, and Marjo is a documentary uh, from the 70s. So it is available pretty easily online. Yeah. It's just called Marjo. Um, like, first three letters of Mary, first three letters of Joseph. Oh, is that yeah, that's called yeah. Marjo? Or Joe. Like jo- jo- oh, sorry, it's M-A-R-J-O-E. But that's why it's called Marjo. Oh, okay. So Marjo was a... Uh, a uh, faith healer in the uh, in the seventies, and he decided that he didn't want to do it anymore. He didn't want to um, lie to people anymore, so he hired a documentary crew so he could show them all the tricks and stuff oh, like that. Okay, and then he just kind of came out at the end. So, so kind of like an expose type of yeah. thing. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna get into today. So uh, hold tight. You can either pause it, go watch it, or just uh, we'll be right back to talk about what we just saw. <laughs> Okay. All right, we did it. We watched Marjo. Wow. Um, first thing, uh, they do that every week and in those kind of churches? Uh, every week at the minimum. Cause that is... So you got your Wednesday night service, prayer service as well. Exhausting. Yeah, and then when you, when uh, somebody comes from out from out of town like that, it could be on a Tuesday night, it could be on Thursday like, night. Holy it's like, shit. I mean... You could uh, you could be doing that five times a week. Yeah, we watched a documentary about it, so we weren't even there, and like even just ten minutes. In, I remember I'm like, at one I'm point like, you threw is... your pen down in anger. <laughs> <laughs> it was like this. This is this is too much. Yeah, uh, but would you now that you've seen this? Would you do that for the money? Would you be a Marjo? Oh n- no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to do that. No, <laughs> not even for see. 
the scamming thing, sure, whatever. That's yeah. what you're going to do. That's what you're going to do. And I, I think, like, a whole part of what the movie was kind of showing was that uh, he was someone... I think it's a tricky situation with him, though, because he was someone who was uh, he was kind of forced into it from such a young age. Yeah. That's kind of all he knew. Yeah. And like he was saying, he kind of got out of it, but then when he needed the money, he kind of just kept falling back into it. Yeah. And he didn't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And eventually he did stop. So yeah. I, I don't... I don't know necessarily if that'd be the same as just like if you or I decided, yeah, let's go scam some people. For yeah, cash. exactly. I yeah. think I think it's a little different. Uh, yeah, story wise, but I wouldn't. I, I yeah, I don't think I have the patience for it. Yeah, it's it was kind of a sad story overall. Like just well, yeah. his life and like he's saying like he would have to tell people that the Holy Spirit was moving in him and his parents didn't. Um, didn't make him say this stuff, and he just got it from God. And but meanwhile, his parents are abusing him. And, well, that's what like, they were saying, like him. about his mother. Like she would like uh, smother him with a pillow, or yeah, uh, like kind of like waterboard him and shit. But because yeah. she knew she couldn't leave any marks or bruises on yeah. him. Yeah. But well, it, it, then even of his father too, and like seeing him later on, the the whole thing about he's just like, I can't hate him. I can't like. It's like about forgiveness and yeah. karma and stuff. But at the same time, it's also like, are you just kind of completely ignoring this? Like, yeah. This is, this is some really serious stuff that happened to you and was done to you yeah. from, like, such a young age. Yeah, you need to deal with to that, buddy. In order to exploit you and exploit... Every- I'm sure they might have. Yeah, I don't hopefully. Think. Like, well, yeah, we'll see what happens. I guess the movie was, though, it was banned in the South. Like, a lot of Southern states yep. didn't have it um, because of not wanting to offend people, I guess. Uh-huh. Anything kind the of... The South pre- not wanting to offend people. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think... You, so you don't think he was called by God at four years old? No. Um, no, 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 no. Yeah. No. I loved his, like, the little clip of him marrying that couple. That was weird. Yeah, and, like, rolling the R's and the wilt thou. <laughs> I mean, why would you want to yeah. marry by a child? Yeah. And why isn't, like, isn't there like a labor board? Of yeah, exactly. <laughs> like child labor or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It, it had that weird kind of like toddlers and tiaras kind yes. of. Yes. Yeah. With these parents living vicariously through their kid. Yeah. But a little more exploitatively. Yeah. Trying to make money. Like he's. What did he say? From the time he was four to fourteen, they probably made about three million dollars, and he never saw any of that. Yeah, he didn't see a dime of it. I wonder if his parents are, were still together at this point. When the documentary was made, because it was just his dad. That I don't was, think so, yeah. no, because he said his dad split when he was like, like oh, I think like ten or something like that. Okay, and yeah, and uh, that yeah, makes sense. He took the but he took the money and run, going around preaching and yeah, yeah. what a dink. I okay, so it's it's funny. There was something he said about uh, starting off as a miracle, and uh, when it started, I wasn't really sure what his stance was, but kind of at the end, where you realize that's not really. Where yeah, it was more. I think an ironic comment. Yeah, that's than true. Anything. Yeah, because I was just like, well, it wasn't really a miracle. It was a C-section and yeah. an umbilical cord yeah. around your neck, and it was because of the doctors that you were saying, yeah. not because of a miracle. I love it. Yeah, when when doctors, you know, go through med school and learn from people who have done all this research, and they uh, work as a team, and they have this great technology, and and then and this vast knowledge, and then it's like, they do all this work, they spend, you know, 12 hours in an operating room, and then everyone's like, thank God, yeah. okay, but maybe thank these other people as well. Wouldn't it have been, like, if it was God, you just would have, like, I don't know, walked into the forest and waited for it to go away or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Okay, so the documentary starts off with them sitting in a hotel. Well, it starts off with the clips of him as a kid, and then it yeah. goes into like him kind of setting up the premise in the hotel room. Mm-hmm. So speaking to the group of of filmmakers and uh, explaining to them that they have to cut their hair, they have to stop smoking, and they have to they can't pick pretend up, they can't pick up. Yeah, they can't pick up women. women. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I was. Which, it was interesting watching that too because again, I still wasn't really sure what his stance was yeah. and how his like involvement kind of was with everything. So yeah. it, was, it was a very bizarre moment where I'm like, "What is, what is going on exactly?" Yeah, here? yeah, and that the, the whole explanation for if somebody asks you if you're saved, you have to say like, "Yes, brother," and I'm washing the same blood as you. <laughs> and then he was like talking about how like there's like that violent imagery and yeah. stuff. And, yeah. I thought that was really interesting. I think, it, well, I mean, he was he was selling prayer cloths. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I've um, seen he's selling prayer cloths. I um, gotta say, though, the big thing I'm getting out of this is 
being a good preacher is really boring and repetitive. Yeah, it's true. It's, yeah. I don't know how many times they said hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know how many times they said Jesus, but I think those were the two most common words in this whole thing. Yeah. Well, because you're building up that emotion, right? And you're like bringing back... So these things, just you recall them and you recall them, you, you put a seed in with this word and then you're going to say it over and over again. And over time, you have this connection and it's like, just like a trigger for like, okay. It's just like bad writing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Christian music too. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. just like, I mean, you're telling a, a really, really bad story with yeah. very little point. Yeah. That you should be able to say is like, yeah, and then uh, Jesus died for your sins. Yeah. But then dragging it out and yeah. saying, is like, what did Jesus do? Hallelujah. He came yeah. in here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus did. Hallelujah. And he went up there. Hallelujah. And died for you. Yeah. Jesus did. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's like, why Why do you have to keep saying hallelujah? I remember when I was uh, still going to church, there was, there, was a, what, there was one point where I was like, why do they get us to repeat stuff back to them? And then I was like... I bet it's so that we feel like we just automatically agree with them with, without actually thinking of things. I can see this part So part I of it. did this thing where anytime I was in church and they said, repeat after me or say this when I say this, I just refused to do it. And I would just stand there and I would yeah. just listen. And I was like, no, I don't agree with this. And I don't yeah. agree with that. Well, I think and that's I think, a big part of it for yeah. sure. Yeah. And uh, he had some neat tricks, though, like the prayer cloth, like you were saying, yeah. like that's taken from in the book of Acts in the Bible where. Um, somebody was sick, so they prayed over, prayed over a cloth, and then somebody brought him that cloth, and they touched him, and the person was healed. So Peter Popoff uses them. He sells prayer cloths. A lot of different faith healers sell, sell prayer cloths for donations because um, it's like a th- souvenir, I guess. You can yeah. bring to somebody else and be like, here, God's in this hanky. I find that so weird. It's even too, like... Not just in this denomination, but it, like people buying like holy water, yeah, from, like the Vatican or yeah. something like that. Uh, it's it's bizarre. How do these people not see these priests and these preachers? Some of them driving around in like you know a hundred thousand well, dollars. Like that one guy talking and, about God gave him a catalog because yeah, was, he would give good things to his children, so God's gonna give good things to him. But I and, mean, like you have to at a certain point, you have to be like, no, God didn't give you that. We gave we you gave that you money that as a money congregation. Gave, yeah, exactly. You got yeah. you got old ladies here yeah. who are saving up, you know, to buy food, mm-hmm. but instead they're giving it to you to yeah. buy a catalog. Like, how do you? How do you justify that as a parishioner or someone who's supposed to be, you know, altruistic and caring yeah. and, like, part of this community? Well, because he's trying to sell to them, too. So he wants his Cadillac. Yeah. He wants to drive around a Cadillac. So his thing is, I'm going to sell to them that they also can get a Cadillac. But to do that, they have to give more money. And it- and it's, I, but yeah. I, regardless of what what he's selling, I yeah. just I don't. Uh, yeah, no. It, it whether my you're mind, selling like, it or not, um, how can you how can you not at, at some point step back and say, well, wait a minute, why am I why am I uh, like sitting in this place where I'm allowing someone to tell the elderly yeah. and the sick, yeah, and the mentally ill, yeah, and, and children to yeah. to. Put whatever money they have. Yeah, because like been that's saving. what he said. Re- Reach into your pocket and grab the biggest bill you have. Things that they yeah. have been saving onto, or they've yeah. been working for, to give it to this guy yeah. who already has so much and is is using it to buy like expensive jewelry yeah. or to buy uh, in the movie. What was it like? Eight hundred acres of land in yeah, Brazil. Yeah, that guy, the one preacher who was saying he owns eight hundred <sighs> acres, eight hundred acres of land in Brazil that he was. He said it was all jungle, and yep. he was bulldozing it for crops and he was a gonna few acres yeah, of few, it, yeah yeah and he yeah. was gonna sell some of it to like Kellogg's or something something like that yeah and like yeah I, I, I just I don't get the disconnect between yeah. the two like I can I can see being so into something that you can't see the forest through the yeah. trees but at the same time you have to just like when they were in the in the uh, in the black church yeah this is in the seventies, so this is after seg- we. Uh, this is very segregated. I commented that I had I just saw my first black person in the movie. There, yeah, there was one it, person, and then all of a sudden it was it was a full church. Yeah, a full congregation, but the only white person there was the the lady who was preaching to them. Yeah, which which was funny too, because of course it's got to be the rich white people yeah. doing it as well. And she was talking about uh, how much money the church needs. And yeah. They did a nice little zoom in on this big gold necklace that she yeah. was wearing, too. And then that was, she was awful. Like, that was... Oh, she was a terrible person. Because she... Uh, her thing, too, was that you want you have to give a certain amount to God. Yeah. 
uh, automatically, which always goes to them. Like, it's always like they're the ones accepting it on God's behalf. Yeah. But then you have to give a sacrifice amount. And she said specifically, like, you have if you have a bill you need to pay, don't pay that bill. But that, I, yeah. I missed that. Yeah, missed that's what that. she said. Don't, okay. She said, don't pay that bill. Give it to God. I think so. She had a separate line stuff. for people giving sacrifice gifts. That's what that was. Yeah. For. Okay. I, I kind of heard it, but I missed part of what yeah. she was saying. I think part of me was just angry and just yeah, t- telling it, tuning it yeah. out. Uh, that so was the sacrifice what, thing where yeah, she t- she was the woman who made like that whirlwind sound with her mouth, like yes, <laughs> yeah, whatever, some yeah. dumb thing. Uh, this it reminds me, uh, my grandmother, not religious in any way. Yeah. Um, but she worked for a religious uh, mail-out center. Yeah. Because it was a job. She yeah. hated the guy running or whatever. But yeah. the one of the things they would do, they would send out mail-outs asking people for money all throughout the states. And yeah. That's what it would be. They say like, "Oh, the furnace is broken, and yeah. father so and so needs to needs to fix the furnace. So send whatever you can." Yeah. And you know, it's just gonna be all these like little old ladies who are probably eating cat food because yeah. they're so poor. But sending, you know, their last fifty dollars to this asshole yeah. who who owns millions of dollars of property and doesn't pay taxes because yeah. he's a religious organization. Yeah, like he was saying too about uh, how all these all these big preachers once they get a certain amount they have their mailing lists. Yep. And uh, and that's where they make yeah. yeah, that's where they make yeah. most of their money. And it's just they only do like the tour to like get those shots of them yep. meeting with people and stuff like that and kind of spread the word and get more people on that mailing list so that they can make more money from that. Well, then you say like the radio thing where you just say, like, you say something like you, it, all you need to do is send out like $10. Yeah. And you've got like yeah, 200, the 200 old the ladies out there yeah. with the cookie jar and yeah. they send $10. You just make $2,000 yeah. just like that. Yeah. And that was like, uh, like this mail, this is a very kind of similarly related, but yeah. tangentially, I guess, you know, they'd send out hundreds of thousands of mail outs every day. That's yeah. or every like week. That's what they would do. Yeah. And it's crazy. You only need a small percentage in order to just. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I, uh, I was at a, I was at one of these meetings once with a guy uh, named uh, Billy Burke. Billy Burke. And Billy Burke is a guy who goes around to different churches and does his faith healing thing or whatever. And yeah. one of the, one of the times he's like, "Now we're gonna take a moment to give a donation. It costs us a lot of money to go around and do this, but we're doing like the Lord's work or whatever." And he's like, "But uh, what you want to think? What you want to ask yourself is, do you want a twenty dollar miracle tonight, or do you want a fifty dollar miracle tonight?" <laughs> and I just look at my dad and I'm like, "I'm out of here." And he's like, "Yeah, me too." <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 a really aggressive way yeah. to go about it. Yeah, but, but I mean, with that, you're gonna get like some the real fanatics. Yeah, think, for something. Yeah, well, I don't know. Know, like money counting too. Like, yeah, well, there was a few times like they would, they weren't even finished, and you just yeah. have people in the background counting cash. That one guy had a shit eating grin grin while he was counting yeah. that money. Like he was just so pleased with See, how the much thing money is, they got. Though, that with that though, I can understand how the the congregation would justify that. Is like he's happy for the church getting that money. Yeah, he's happy that the people have been so kind and generous. Yeah. So they're gonna be yeah. like, they're not gonna think, oh, this guy just made you know six thousand dollars from his parishioners tonight. Yeah, it's like no, he he got the community to come together. Yeah, to make this money for the church. Yeah, for the for the <laughs> good work. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, I mean, what I found, it was funny watching the documentary and seeing the faith healing and just kind of the assembly line yeah. nature of it. Where so many you lines. Just, you get, you get in line and it's just yeah. like, oh, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Yeah. And some of the people that just start shaking and then like yeah. falling down. And Yeah. Do you know what that's called when they fall down like that? No. It's called being slain in the spirit. Slain in the spirit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks like uh, delusional kind of <laughs> and my favorite was the modesty cloths like whenever a woman oh, would yeah. fall, fall all the churches throw, they, they show they just had those blankets ready to go like they just like they all knew what was coming and they all had well, those blankets not even just that you, you had like yeah. three or four guys just kind of standing around watching waiting yeah. for someone to fall down or yeah. something it's, the, yeah the it's, catchers or whatever it's like, very yeah. weird and like they were talking about speaking in tongues and it's just like yeah. yelling at each other in gibberish until yeah. you make someone else start yelling in gibberish. Yeah. So that way. So then you move on to. And then so you you'll so you'll stop yeah. yelling at them in gibberish. Yeah. But at that point, they've been so kind of just inundated with it that yeah. they believe that it was flowing through them. Yeah. <laughs> it's, oh. it's bizarre that. Yeah. Oh, actually, going back to the money counting thing, I thought it was interesting that like while they're counting the money that first time, the other pastor is like 
talking about how much he loved that one technique he used and how he was going to use yeah. it. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I got it from this preacher over here. And just, like, how nonchalant they are talking about, like, how they well, bring th- the money in. I think that's another thing, too, though, is, like, I mean, that's what the profession is. In yeah, it's true. Sense, yeah. Is, is about finding those ways to get the message to the people. Yeah. Um, regardless of what their underlying intentions yeah. are for it. I know for Marjo, it was, he was doing it for, for money. That's yeah. kind of what his thing was, whether yeah. that priest was or not. Yeah. Or whether he, you know, likes to believe it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's such, it's like, it's, it's theater. It's yeah. All theater. It, yeah. And the fact that he wanted to be a rock star too, or an actor. Which I can understand. Yeah. Which yes. he did. He, yeah, he got he, a number of roles afterwards, I think. It he looked was, like it. He was it in like some it was Western, like, I remember jesus movies. Yeah, he usually played a preacher, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, when he was talking about God calling him and he was, like, that vision when he was three years old, or three yeah. and a half years old, and God calls him and gives him the vision of uh, all these lost people, and he said, what can we do to help these lost people? And God was like, you know, you're going to help them, mm-hmm. or whatever, and everybody's just nodding, and like, yep, that seems legit, and just how, like, okay everybody was with, like, just this toddler getting this responsibility yeah. just thrust on him and... it, it almost seems like church is a bad improv group yeah <laughs> where where you just kind of yes and every bad idea yeah because you think that it it has a, a higher meaning yeah rather than it just being made up yeah oh i love that one personal the, uh, ink gain. Do you remember the invisible ink he was yeah, talking with about? Yeah, with the cross on oh, yeah. the forehead, yes. So he has the ink that, like, doesn't show up until it has a certain amount of moisture, so when he starts salt sweating... It, yeah, yeah salt, turn it yeah. red. So we put a cross on his forehead. That's just genius. Oh, man. <laughs> um, oh, we, we talked... Did we talk about the Amazing Randy stuff at the beginning? The yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we did. Okay. Um, Those kind of things, too. You know, illusionists yeah. pointing out <laughs> yeah. how this stuff works. Um, I found it funny. I, I think everyone in, in the documentary, everyone who fell over was an old lady. Yeah. Which I find very interesting, too. Yeah. And, and I gotta wonder what that says about the demographics. Yeah. I've been at uh, events where it's, like, everybody. I, yeah. I've, I've seen other ones as well. Yeah. I'm saying just, like, what we yeah. saw within this. Like, yeah. I, 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 I know a lot of it is, is to do with... Uh, susceptibility yeah. and just the power of suggestion and repetition yeah. and yeah. like you're you're indoctrinated from children so you can't grow expect- up in this yeah. you're expected to do this I, I wanna I don't know how you could quantify it or how you could even begin to understand any yeah. of it but I, I wanna know how, how much in something so extreme as this what the levels of, of uh, mental illness yeah. are within it. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not trying to say it like everyone involved in this is sick in the head. I'm, yeah. I'm saying that there's there has to be some level of it. Yeah. There is in every group. And I think well and with any group too, it's that like desire to belong and it's that desire exactly, to like yeah. um you know, feel like you're part of something and mm-hmm. to them they probably feel like, Oh, this is part of something big, like I'm communicating with like yeah. God himself. And that's how I felt when, mm-hmm. when I was involved in this stuff. You just you get it's so much emotion and yeah. so much like like you said, the repet- repetitive nature mm-hmm. of it and stuff. And so you're just like it's all building to this like one moment yeah. for you and then boom, you're down on the ground. Well and... that's that's why I wonder about like the mental health thing. Yeah. Like how how much of it is kind of ignored and yeah. like just brushed aside because they believe that they have something else that's kind of dealing with yeah. it. Yeah, I, I don't know how many people yeah. are kind of using this not as a crutch, but almost as a, it's it's like a band aid for what their issues yeah. may or may not be. Yeah. I mean, even even all the older people within the crowd, you yeah. can see for a lot of them, I'm sure it was just just to have a sense of uh, you know someone to talk to, yeah. someone like human contact yeah but it just kind of steamrolls and you don't know like how much yeah. depression there is you don't know yeah, how much true. you know all these kind of things that will never really be addressed in these communities yeah I'm exactly sure. yeah have you seen the video of benny hen um and where he's praying over people or whatever they fall mm-hmm. down he takes like a jacket and swings it and everybody in the group Falls down. Oh, I think I have seen this. But yes. they put the bodies to the floor over it. I have seen this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the best thing ever. 
Uh, we should put a link to that up. <laughs> yeah. For everyone to uh, take a look. Yeah. Um, oh, get, going back to like what you were saying uh, about the little tricks when he he was near the end, he was talking about uh, the gimmicks that you need. Yes. Not yeah. just not just that you need in order to to do your job well, but in order to get booked again yeah which is which is insane yeah <laughs> like, if you don't have i guess it's like any performer you have yeah. to have something that gets people to want to bring you back yeah right? exactly yeah but this is in you need a gimmick in order to lie to people <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's it's nuts oh, what else did i have let me see if i had any more it's so much money yeah uh, the facade of holiness. That was the. That was the other thing. Oh yeah, yeah. I, like, when he I was wrote talking that down about too. That. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was talking about. He'd be fine to do it if he could. If he could just talk about, the good stuff. And, yeah. And you know, praising and whatever, but not have yeah. to bring in the doom and gloom and. Yeah. Hell and. But he won't make any of that money if he doesn't. Punishment. Say yeah. About punishment and hell, and like he was even talking about one time where he would send people to hell, um, if they were. If they said they believed in God but didn't spread the gospel. And he said, I think they deserve to go to hell, too. Yeah. And until they realize the error of their ways or whatever. It's like, that's really harsh. Yeah. <laughs> it It's a very insular, yeah. unforgiving kind of... Yeah. Forgiving, but with only, like, certain parameters, you know? like Is forgiveness with a caveat really yeah, forgiveness? Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. It, like, if, yeah. if you have to put a little asterisk beside yeah. it, it's like, I'll only forgive you if this is what you do. Yeah. I mean, I think any time there's always going to be kind of those little conditional-isms with how people forgive people. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true. I think that's yeah. just kind of human nature. But yeah. I think I forgiveness know. is overrated. I think just like yeah, just hold hate. grudges, let yeah. that build up inside you. You want to hate someone, you fucking hate them. <laughs> Who cares? Any other thoughts on Marjo or Faith Healers? Uh, I thought it was. A, I thought it was a really good documentary. I thought it was a really interesting look into into something so extreme. Yeah. Um, but it was also really kind of a character study of of him, Marjo himself. Yeah, it's true. And it's kind yeah. of a sad life. Yeah. Um, I'd like to know more about what happened to him afterwards. Yeah. Like, I know you said he did act a bit, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I think I read somewhere that that girlfriend he had at the end, they didn't last very long. They weren't really in a relationship that long, but, um, yeah. but at least she has uh, that, uh, you know, to show her grandkids or whatever. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I was in this documentary for two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Won the Oscar. And that poor dead dog. Yeah. Well, the dog in the movie is dead. That's a fun, yeah, that's a fun thing to do if you ever watch an old movie with somebody and there's a dog in it. Just look at them and say, that dog's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> That'll ruin their day. Hey, well. And then uh, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Are we doing the Christian Rock Lyric of the Week? You gotta. Or the bye week Of uh, the bye week yeah. Christian Rock Lyric of the bi weekly we're, we're bi-weekly as in every other week, not right. bi-weekly as in twice a week. Right. Is that yes. what? I wanted to clarify. Yeah. Can't you see you're not making Christianity better? You're just making rock and roll worse. All right, this song is called Jumping in the House of God by oh. the Worldwide well, Message Tribe. Worldwide Message Tribe. I figured there's a lot of, we saw a lot of people jumping up and down in the house of the Lord today, so yes. let's, let's, uh, hear it. let's hear about it. We rejoice in your name all day long. Praise your love forever strong. Your spirit comes. It comes like thunder. We're going to sing your songs unnumbered. Jesus, you died on the cross to free us. We sing your praise, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you died on the cross to free us. We sing your praise, Lord Jesus. From the north to the... S My phone just died. So I guess that's all <laughs> we got. So check out the Worldwide Message Tribe. My I phone's was, dead. I was going to say, I think it's funny. A lot of these lyrics, rather than... It's not really praise. It's just kind of saying stuff that so happened. Like a list of attributes? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah, I think Jesus knows what he did. Yeah. And I think everyone in the church knows what he did yeah you have one book yeah exactly that you've all read a bunch of times and uh so why would you make your songs just like jesus died for you it's like we know yeah that's like, the whole best Je yeah jesus was on the th it's like yeah i know that's what that's yeah whole, that's why we're here because yeah. of that you don't have to sing about it now like yep. you can sing about other things talking about what a great guy he is yeah talking about yeah 
<laughs> Love those sashes. Uh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to jump in the house. We're going to jump on out of here. Oh, yeah. And uh, thanks, everyone, for listening. Keep uh, believing. Believe it or not. Or not. I'm going to eat some snack foods. Have a good night, guys. And, and ladies. And work, 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 Sky Moon. <laughs>